this chapter that we've dealt with, it started with yesterday, basically deals with the fact is what happens in these uncertain times that we find ourselves in at the moment. Um, it's not just um, pandemics and um, and natural disasters uh, um, and that that forces us to change our approach to how we do our business. And in being in the services industry, we have identified yesterday it's slightly more challenging because um, if there are um, a re if there's a reduction in um, the demand from the customers um, when you are producing products, it's quite simple. You can just reduce your production as uh, so you are not left with excess stock. With services, it's slightly different because the service is still there. Um, as we have on the screen, what happens with with um, um, Tiffendale, um, Tiffendale as, as, as our ski resort in the Drakensberg, um, all of a sudden, um, in, in their specific um, case, it's, it's, it's a seasonal business because it doesn't snow in December in the Drakensberg. So they had to um, change and uh, um, try and match the, um, the, 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 the um, supply and demand or, or capacity and demand. Uh, they had to smooth out the whole process and they decided to offer different functions and alternative options like horse riding and mountain bike trails and, uh, and these kind of um, activities to ensure that in the slower periods, um, they also still have business. So that's one way of doing it, to smooth the demand. You can actually manipulate or smooth the demand by offering people more, by offering them alternatives, but um, then also your own capacity to be able to deliver the service that you are used to offering and or want to offer is also affected. Um, and this refers to where we now have to um, change our capacity and maybe increase what we offer um, to, um, to ensure that we match our capacity and demand. Um, now this specific focus um, is to um, refers to and uh, attempts to adapt the supply side. In other words, what you as a service provider can offer as opposed to the demand. Demand during a peak period is much higher than you can actually accommodate and you have to work around that and maybe make a few changes, hire more people to address that um, as the previous um, 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 approach suggests. But now, the other side that you can have more control over is the capacity. In other words, your capacity to be able to deliver your service. Um, and if you can, um, um, if you can manage the supply better uh, to fit the patterns of demand, you are actually going to survive difficult periods. And um, some of the aspects that you can focus on is a to um, if we look at um, um, at, at specific businesses who during festive period, banks for instance, during festive periods, they can just extend their working hours. Um, they can be open for much longer because they know people are, um, are not necessarily always at work. People have more time to do business. Um, and because it's a time that people require their services more, um, so the demand is up, but we can increase our capacity to in, in, to, to meet the, the, the increased demand because those workers know we're going to work extra hours. We're going to get paid for the extra hours that we work now during the, the, the peak times. But then also um, when it slows down again, we're not going to lose our jobs. We're just going to have a, a reduced work rate um, and, and um, um, or we may be rewarded with um, with with some time off um we can also um we can also hire additional staff during these times um that's the most common way to deal with it um to say you know what the demand is higher there are more people um uh, requiring our service let's just get more people in let's get a um let's get a final year um dentist student in or dental student in from um, from a university to assist us 
um, with some of the minor procedures, for instance, if there's an increase in demand for 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 for, for dental services during um, a peak period, or maybe get um, some extra waiters and waitresses in to assist us in our restaurant because it's um, it's Christmas time or it's a festive period and um, the demand for our services are greater. Um, as long as you properly inform and train your temporary staff in the same manner than your full-time staff. You don't want to um, have somebody there to help you out on a temporary basis and that's they know that. They know that when the, um, the peak period is finished, they are not necessarily going to be um, um, rem remain in, um, in employed. Um, that they might, um, that you might let them go. Um, but if you have not properly informed and trained them in advance, um, that will be their attitude towards the temporary um, um, uh, involvement with your company. And because it can be very damaging, you can get temp temporary people in to address your uh, to address your increase in demand, but um, it can actually damage your business because they know they're temporary and they act accordingly and therefore they're not offering the same quality of service that your customers usually um, um, expect. You can also um, use your facilities better. Um, like I said yesterday, maybe bring out a few extra tables if you have um, space in front of your shop that you can use. Um, if there's no restrictions within the um, the particular facility that you are a um, tenant in, um, but mostly, um, especially during peak times, I've seen that um, at the at, at the Wimpy and Cons by, for instance, as well. When when it's peak times, they actually bring out a few extra chairs outdoors because the weather is good, and um, that allows them the opportunity to um, to to address the um, increase in demand um, and. That's what you do. You, you change your layout and you add more options for customers um, when it comes to the facilities. Um, equipment wise, sometimes with this a huge increase in demand during peak periods, um, instead of actually buying an extra truck or getting an extra digger loader in if you're in construction, um, it's 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 much simpler to just um, on a temporary basis, just for a short term, hire that particular um, um, piece of equipment that's required because you don't um, you're not going to be stuck with that during your slower periods um, because um, there's no there's no purpose um, and no use for that um, for that piece of equipment at that stage. Um, these are the kind of um, applications that is has been successful over, over, over a period of time um, when you're trying to match your capacity and demand um, and specifically um, this, and specifically have decided on, um, on a um, approach where you're going to try and increase your capacity to deliver rather than just um, deal with the increase or, or in an attempt to deal with the increase in demand. Right. What usually happens during a period where there's an increase in demand is that people are um, people are confronted with the challenge of queuing, and not too many people I know of have ever been really comfortable with standing in a queue. Um, although it's one of those things that I could never personally understand um, that that it could trouble somebody. I know the nature of human beings is not to wait. We want to be serviced. We want to be um, helped as soon as possible. But you're not the only person who have specific needs and demands that needs to be satisfied. If you go to the bank, if you go to the supermarket, you're not the only one doing shopping. You're not the only one doing banking. Um, and it's, it's maybe something that uh, that I learned quite early on in my life when I did my national service after school, that at some point you are going to queue. Um, and at some point, actually, and I figured that out um, quite, quite early on in my time 
um, with the South African Army, and that was that you have to you have to pick the queues that you stand in. There are certain queues that you don't want to be at the front, and there are certain queues that you actually uh, want to be um, right at the front. If you and I found that out quite quite early on in in my national service. Don't rush to be at the front of the queue when they serve breakfast. Because within 10 minutes, by the time that the last person has actually just touched this plate, they're already going to call you for the first physical session for the day. You don't want that. You don't want any amount of food in your stomach at that point when they are starting the first phys the physical session at 6 o'clock in the morning. There are certain times of the day that you want to be at the back of the queue. That's one of them. These kind of lessons we learn quite quickly. But by nature, having said that, people don't like the queue. They want to be serviced. They want to be serviced as quickly as possible. So there are a few approaches that you can take to ensure that the queuing is done better, that you're more efficient in the different options that's available based on the type of business that you have. Um, and alternatively, also maybe improve the experience of the customers um, while they are queuing, because that can all add to um, uh, a more satisfactory experience um, when they entertain while they are busy queuing. But we'll address that um, just now. There are different queuing patterns and configurations um, that we have on the screen. Um, Let's look at some of them um, and just um, at the hand of examples explain to you um, the differences. We, you don't have to know the difference between all of, all of these, but um, I think you need to be aware of the fact that um, there are specific configurations that's more um, effective in whatever particular position you find yourself or organization or um, industry you find yourself in. The most common one is a single line, single server. Um, that's just people queuing up. Person on the right hand side, that little red block over there is the service provider. That's one person servicing you and you just queue. Uh, it often happens in, um, it, traditionally that was the way things are done, um, but it's it aggravates people queuing because um, you don't know what the demands of each um, customer is until they actually get to the front and you have to address it. It makes it difficult. Um, a classic example, if any of you have seen the movie Love Actually, um, that scene where uh, Mr. Bean, Ron Atkinson, is actually working in a retail shop and he is, um, somebody just bought an item that they didn't want um, um, or he didn't want his wife to see, so he was actually quite a bit in a rush, but um, Mr. Bean just took his time. For him, it was an experience. For the other person, it was it, it became an annoyance. So sometimes, um, if that happens, um, the people who need to be serviced that's waiting in the back of the queue behind you get agitated. Um, it's not the best approach to take. Then you have your... Um, your parallel lines for multiple service, you find that often in a bank, that's that one uh, third from the top, you have more than one cashier, you've got people who queue up in a single line and then they go to the, um, um, to, to, to the cashier that becomes available next. You find the same approach in the supermarket as well where um, they indicate to you um, um, visually as well as verbally that um, um, tool number five or next customer tool number six, um, then you know where to go to. Then you've got your um, very popular lines um, um, or very popular uh, configuration, the one that we call the snake, which is a single line, but it's multiple service. Um, and they also allow the opportunity for, for additional um, um, customer satisfaction by putting products up in that um, area that you're lining up. But you know when you get to the front, you've got different options you can go to. But um, I think the one I personally found most effective um, 
oh, before I get to that one, we can also look at a designated line to the um, designated service. Um, way back in the 1980s, when I was traveling in Europe, um, it was before um, South Africans were seen as part of the international community, and there was a separate line. When you get to customs, it is um, um, South African, South African, <laughs> and, and to, uh, travelers, and, um, and then you've got your British British citizens, uh, citizens, and then the rest. If you go to Israel, for instance, so those designated lines, for instance, at banks they also use it where they have a specific line if you only want um, um, general information, or if you want investment information, or if you want information on opening an account, uh, if you want to see a, a, a banker, for instance, for personal um, reasons, these are all different designated um, service. So the service provider, the, 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 the blocks on the right hand side, have specific um, expertise that they can offer the customer. So um, you will be serviced better, you will still be queuing, but you'll be serviced better because you are going to the line that is actually going to solve your problem. You're not standing in a general line, like the one right at the top, which is a single line, single server. You get to the front and they say, sorry, sir, you're in the wrong queue. You need to go to, and that really frustrates people. The one I quite enjoy, the first time I've experienced it was a number of years ago in Namibia, as a matter of fact. Uh, I went to the um, equivalent of Vodacom. Um, and um, when you go abroad, I'll, I initially made the mistake of, of activating my roaming service. Um, it's quite expensive. So I decided, you know what, when I get to Namibia, I'm just going to get a different SIM card, where I have the SIM card inserted in my phone. But then there's a process that you have to go through, and then also you have to buy airtime for the period that you are there. Um, so, oops, Daisy, that was um, my bad. Um, let's go back to the previous page, or can we go back to the previous page? Where's that option now that has been so... I don't have this option anymore. That's impossible. Anyway, let's try it again. Let's go back to the previous page. We can't go back to the previous page. Anyway, the last of those configurations I wanted to explain to you is, is the one where you walk into a shop um, and you have a self-help... Um, um, screen that in this case I just had to insert my cell number um, and they will um, and, and what my specific inquiry is about um, they give you a number um, and that would be the next person that will that will service you so if there are five people waiting um, in line for um, upgrading of the um, packages then you'll be number six in line um, Regardless if you're the only person in the shop, but you get a number and you um, you basically uh, I know that um, Home Affairs uses that as well. It, it's quite a it's quite efficient and a quite um, um, an effective way of of dealing with um, with queuing. When you're waiting in line, there are a few things that you can do to ensure that um, the experience is made more tolerable. Um, for instance, I know that if you go to certain, if you go to the doctor's um, um, rooms, for instance, they always have magazines and stuff. There's always a television on that you can watch. What you have got no control of what's on the screen, but at least it provides you with some kind of entertainment that you can watch or magazines that you can read while you are waiting to pass the time. So it's not that you don't know what to do, but nowadays most people anyway are on their phones while they are waiting um, in line or um, when they are seated in the waiting area at a, at a dentist or a doctor, for instance. Um, we can also employ um, operational logistics. For instance, if you if you look at an airport, if you're booking in and some of the um, the first airlines to to take this approach was the Australian airline called Qantas, and but most of them employed nowadays that this particular approach, and that is to have you book in at various um, kiosks or, um, um, or stands throughout the airport. You don't have to go to the main um, 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 area to, um, you, basically you can, you can book in anywhere. You don't have to queue. There are five, six, seven different um, um, 
screens and, and, and stalls available to you to do it. You go to the you know, to one that actually is not manned, you do your booking, you get your um, boarding pass, and all you have to basically do is just book your um, 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 your luggage, if you have any luggage, um, to book that in. Um, so it, it reduces your queuing um, immensely. Then also, um, you can, you can, to a certain extent, um, prevent the queuing from happening if you have a reservation system or process in place. Uh, it works quite well. I know sometimes people, um, it only works well. Let me rather say this. It only works well if you stick to that. If you have a restaurant that you have, um, that you've split up between four or eight waitresses or waiters um, into four quarters, with two of them servicing each quarter, um, and it becomes difficult when people uh, arrive late um, for their reservation, because often the mistake is made to um, um, to give that table somebody else. Sometimes people are queuing and waiting for the section that the waiters or waitresses service. Um, but there are empty tables available in other areas, although they've been, they've been reserved. If you stick to your reservations, if you do it properly, then it works perfectly well. But then also we have to, um, we have to take into consideration that we're working with human beings and human beings are not always on time and also life happens. There could be accidents on the way. Uh, it could be out of their control. Um, for being late. Two specific incidents that spring to mind are two movies that I have um, in the past wa watched quite um, regularly, and that is Mum's Night Out, when they decided to go out and they booked in advance or made a reservation in advance, a restaurant where they can actually, um, or a sort of upmarket restaurant that doesn't cater for children. And because it was Mum's Night Out, dads are taking care of the kids at home and they can actually just relax. And then they stuffed up their reservation because um, of a um, difference in interpretation. Um, and you can help me out here because um, I know that in my household there's also not um, conclusion on exactly which is the right one. If I refer to the next Saturday, I refer to coming Saturday. To me, that's the next Saturday because the previous Saturday was last Saturday. To me, the next Saturday is this coming Saturday. For some people, the next Saturday is not this Saturday coming up, the um, um, 29th of May, but the following Saturday. How do you think, uh, how, how do you interpret that? Has there ever been confusion in your lives um, with this specifically? Because some people see it differently. Um, a lot of people see it differently, as a matter of fact. And that's going to result in confusion, because if you find in and make a reservation for Saturday, for coming Saturday, and people will actually say, right, this is a Saturday coming now. Um, can I make a reservation for next Saturday? Then sometimes people write you up for um, next Saturday, not now, this coming Saturday, 29th of May. Have you experienced something like that? Any confusion? How do you feel about this? What, what does the next Saturday mean to you? Anybody? Uh, so if you would say the next Saturday, I would say next weekend Saturday, because if you would say this Saturday, it would mean this week's Saturday. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, continue. No, no, I can't sir. So next Saturday for you, um, just to get it right, because the, the sound quality wasn't great at the start. I think it's improved since. To you, the next Saturday is not now coming Saturday. It's the following Saturday. Yes. But I misinterpret your, um, because I said the sound quality was quite bad at the start of this, um, um, of, of, of your reply, but um, it's much better now. Maybe just repeat it. So for next Saturday for you is Saturday, that's the next one, the, this, this coming Saturday, or is it the next one? So if you would say next Saturday, I would say that it would be next week's Saturday. 
it wouldn't be the 20 it wouldn't be the 20 it would be the one that's um let's say the 5th of june or something like that yeah okay have you ever been in a situation where there was confusion as a result of how you've interpreted that as opposed to how maybe somebody else have interpreted it maybe people showing up at your door and say oh i thought the bra was tonight no 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 it's next saturday <laughs> because that's, that can happen yes no, I actually haven't had that. Like everyone that I've met, like has the same idea. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be much easier if you just say the date instead of next Saturday? Let's get together for a bride next Saturday. Um, no, let's get together for a bride. Let's make it um, the Saturday is the twenty eighth. Let's make it the 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 fifth of June. Then everybody would be fine because the fifth of June can't be confused with any other date because <laughs> it comes once a year. So, yeah, it, 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 but it can be confusing because of how people express themselves and how people interpret themselves because people interpret it differently. My one son is very adamant. Next Saturday means this coming Saturday because the previous one is gone. I mean, but anyway, that, that's, it, it's semantics. But it can lead, lead to confusion. Just make sure then when you have a reservation <laughs> process in place that your staff is trained to understand that next Saturday, um, or, or ask the questions when people phone in for a reservation to say, um, you know what, is this now coming Saturday the 28th or is it the following Saturday the 5th of June? However, to avoid all of this, um, the majority of these businesses who offer you online reservation options nowadays, um, you can actually pick the date yourself and the time. So there's no confusion. It's not that there was a human interaction that resulted in confusion. You pick the date yourself. So if you pick the wrong date, nothing we can do about that. Anyway, there are ways that we can actually strategize to ensure that when people are queuing, because they are going to queue, that at least that experience is so much better. And or to avoid queuing but through reservation um, um, through reservation um, um, options. Um, another, um, I'm not sure if you've seen the movie, Date Night. Um, it was, uh, I quite enjoyed it. Um, it was where they've always gone, this married couple for many, many years have gone, um, they've had a standard agreement of date night every Tuesday, once a month, whatever. Um, and this was date night. So they decided this time they're going to change it and they're going to go to one of these posh places and not go through the normal routine. So it's something special for a change. But then obviously, having decided that sort of last minute, they didn't make reservations and they were going to a popular place. So the chances that you'll find an um, 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 available table was very remote. And then they basically scammed themselves into it because they were sitting at the bar with, with everybody that hope that they might get a table actually um, um, wait um, and then they acted as if they were a couple that did not actually show for the for their particular reservation and then obviously the whole story escalates from there quite entertaining I quite enjoyed it but anyway um, that can also happen um, just make sure that if you have the reservation option available that um, that it's managed properly um, to avoid additional frustration you can also um, have a have a differentiating waiting a customers approach where for instance um, um, triage is a system the triage assessment system is used especially in the medical profession when people arrive at er um, emergency um, ward in in a in a hospital um, where people are treated according to the severity of the injury or um, um, more traumatic if injuries are treated first. Um, this is what they call a triage assessment system that's applied in situations like that because um, me just cutting my finger um, is, is compared to somebody having a knife in his head is, uh, is slightly different uh, and needs different treatment. The one is more severe and more I experienced that myself when I was there. Um, there were people who came in way after I waited at um, or admitted myself to the emergency 
to or, or to ER on a Friday evening, and I realized, you know, Friday evening it's it's crazy time. People make accidents. There are people coming in with blood oozing out of wounds that um, probably needs more immediate attention than I do. And then um, you obviously have to have to wait a bit. So sometimes the circumstances determine um, um, that. Um, or, um, expect you to um, to wait a bit. I've also experienced um, the waiting in doctors' rooms quite regularly, um, and it, sometimes some of the magazines. And it's got to be you've got to be very careful. Remember, people people when they get to um, to a, a waiting area like that, they they are not necessarily in the greatest mood because. Nobody goes to the doctor when they're healthy. You go to the doctor because you're not feeling well and you want to feel better. And to feel better, you are actually, you need some treatment and you need some attention. Um, if you now read the article that um, that sort of adds to your anxiety, it's not going to help. So you've got to really carefully choose the magazines, for instance, that you, that you have. Um, for instance, I mean, um, um, when I was waiting, um, my wife went to the gynecologist with our first child when uh, I think it was the, the second checkup, not the eight week checkup, the or the twelfth week checkup, the, 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 the next one. Um, so I was in the waiting room and she was on her own with the with the gynecologist and I was reading through some magazines and because we were at that point, um, our dog was at his on his last legs and we had to replace it. And I wanted an animal to be around, especially a dog, because I'm a dog lover when my child was born because um it i think it's 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 very important that that you have those kind of um that you have animals around when your children are born but again that's my personal opinion and i read through an article that indicated to me what types of dogs are the best dogs to have around the household when you have little children um, the smaller ones, obviously, are more aggressive because they feel threatened by something that within the first week is, has grown double the size that they are, um, as opposed to dogs with a with a more um, um, with a with a better um, personality and um, easier demeanor. Like, um, for instance, dogs that won't be threatened. For instance, um, um, Labradors have a very good um, demeanor with children as well. So these are the kind of things that. It complements to your visit there, and it makes the waiting. Um, it turns the waiting process into an educational um, session, which is uh, which is quite nice. It's not always going to happen, but um, yeah, careful selection of what you offer your customers uh, while they're waiting. Um, like, for instance, the image on the screen was with, with um, at Disneyland. Um, they know that during peak periods, people are going to queue at Disneyland, and people know that they're going to queue. But by using all those um, um, characters, Disney characters, um, to entertain people, um, chatting to them in line, um, and doing all kinds of funny things with them while they're online, it makes the waiting so much more tolerable. And um, and that's what you actually attempt to do with um, with this kind of approach. Why um, managers? I think in conclusion to the session, uh, what managers have realized is that um, it's very difficult to um, anticipate what actually is going to happen during a, um, a, um, a peak period. Um, and what the downside is going to offer us when, when the market is slow and, and um, um, demand is way lower than what we can um, supply. Um, but management needs to find, and that's what we've attempted to establish during this chapter, find different ways that work for their specific industries and work for their specific businesses to match the supply and demand. The one way that you can do that is obviously to manage your capacity, and that's the easiest way to do it because you can control that to a certain extent or to a greater degree than you can if you want to um, um, try and smooth out um, the demand. 
Service providers need to also turn customers' waiting situations into opportunities to build a better relationship with them. Um, and that, in conclusion, is probably what um, is, is probably the solution to most of the challenges that we find um, with customers who become unhappy during peak hours because um, they are not getting the same quality of service that they usually do, and they are not the ones. It's, in their opinion, it's not their problem that more people want to use that service during a certain time of year. People are like that. Um, I've worked the whole year. I'm tired. I need this. I can afford this. Um, and they are um, they're very unforgiving and intolerant when it comes to um, when it comes to that, um, the majority. I'm, I'm generalizing now when I say that, but the majority do feel like that. Um, and that's why you're always at the mercy of the consumer and why any anxiety that you can um, take away um, or relieve from the customer is, is, is going to be um, to the benefit of your business. Um, I thought of doing the case study I thought of doing the case study um, today. I'm not going to do the case study today. I'm going to do the case study that we have at the end of our chapter. Um, I'm going to do that. I'm just going to give you some background on, on it. Um, McQueenie is just outside of East London on, on what we, well, um, when I grew up, I'm not sure what your sort of, um, what your sort of um, um, the frame of reference is, but um, I spent a lot of time in the Eastern Cape. I quite enjoyed traveling this this kind of trans guy that um, 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 northern part of of um, of, um, of the Eastern Cape bordering KZN. Uh, I found it a very beautiful part of our country. Um, I was very much into diving at that stage, so um, it offers you great diving spots. And this particular this particular venue. Um, Bequeni Hotel and Beach Resort um, is just outside, a um, couple of kilometers away from, from East London. Um, it is well located because um, for the purpose that they, that they um, or the functions that they offer, uh, people from, from not just the Eastern Cape, but people from all over the country uh, would enjoy visiting them, but they're predominantly focusing on um, obviously on, on people from the immediate area. Um, so the services that they offered were um, obviously because they uh, a beachfront, they, they very close to the, to the game reserve, so they can offer game drives and stuff like that. Um, but in this particular case study, um, the two, the two um, new owners um, of, this, of this resort, um, I know that I just want to get their names. Um, the names have slipped my mind for, for a brief second now, but um, it was basically Colin and, and Nicole Woodhead, um, or Whitehead, sorry, they were interested in purchasing this particular property. Um, they realized the potential of the property uh, and all the facilities that's accessible to the customers, but they also realized that there will be, there will be certain times of year that um, that business won't be great. Um, some of the ideas they came up with is to um, get more feet through the door by uh, through the doors by um, um, trying to build relationships with the local government. The majority of your Eastern Cape uh, local government head offices is based about 38 k's away in Bishu. Uh, Department of Labor, Department of Sport and Recreation, all, all those sort of provincial head offices are based there. A lot of people don't know that. People always think it's in Port Elizabeth, but it's actually not. It's in Bishu. Um, and they started to forge relationships with these um, local parastatals because it will actually, um, it means that they can host conferences during the weeks. Um, and then also later on decided to, to expand their services to um, to offer wedding packages to um, to people because they knew if they can actually cater for weddings um, uh, in consultation with um, the bride and groom, 
um, the majority of people who are going to use this venue are going to stay there for the evening, the Friday evening before the wedding, the Saturday during the wedding, and uh, actually the entire weekend um, of friends or the family, um, especially those who've traveled from afar. So they've, they've come up with a different ideas. I want you to just, um, before tomorrow's session, read through this particular case study um, that we found on page 316 to 319 in your textbooks. Um, there are some questions. It's on the next slide. The questions I want us to, oops, Daisy, my mistake. Um, the, the questions that I, um, the questions I want us to address then would be to um, those three specific ones. To summarize the issues that are important to the management of demand, and especially in uh, a business like Queen Hotel and Re Beach Resort, critically assess the methods that um, can be used and was used by them to match supply and demand. And what would you do? Uh, or what would you do if you were in Colin and Nicolette's position um, in this particular business? Read through the case study on those three pages. And I also want you to then, in addition to that, come up with one example yourself. I've already on the next page indicated one specific experience that I ha I've had in Namibia with the Atlantic Villas um, um, a boutique hotel in, in, in Swakopmund. Um, I want you to also come up with your own um, ideas um, of, of, of similar services and challenges that they might experience, um, uh, could, have ex uh, could experience, and how you would be able to address that. Um, do, you have any, do I have any questions from anybody at this stage? Jessica, anybody who's, um, who's, who's, who's online at the moment? Anybody? Jessica? No questions. Any, no questions. any questions? No questions? I know it's a lunchtime session. I appreciate your, your presence. No, I'm fine. Thank you, sir. It's okay. Um, we'll end the session then and we'll chat again tomorrow, third period. Okay. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Bye, sir. Bye-bye.